Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. Okay. Here it is. Now, let me just start again. And I uh, hope that everyone slept well. And yes, it is hot. It is summer. Hope that everyone is enjoying their summer and that they're enjoying their beach time and their fun time and family time. And uh, I got a chance to spend some time with my family. Yay! Woo! And got a chance to spend some time. Saw my mom, my sisters, my brothers, my nephews. Saw the kids. And, you know, I got a chance to just... Get out of my house, I guess. <laughs> I got a chance to get out of my own, uh, uh, what would you call it? I guess quarantine. And I got a chance to spend some time with, uh, with the people that I love. And then I, I noticed that I'm looking at, uh, Good morning, Arlene. I noticed that people are love some of the videos that was being posted, and I sat down and I'm looking at the videos, and then I look, and I just want to say thank you, Miriam, and a thank you to Sanchita, and a thank you to Introvert Girl. Thank you both, all three of you, so much for the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful post and, and the emails and the comments that you've been posting. And I'm so glad that I'm able to help somebody and that you are taking my teachings and applying them to your life and... To watch God work and show up and find that inner peace and clarity that you've been searching for and been seeking. So, welcome to the new viewers. Welcome to the new listeners to Choices Life Coaching and Jennifer's Perspective. And yesterday, I got a chance to speak with a very nice young lady by the name of Miss... Uh, Pearl Mitchell. She's a high pearl. Just giving you a big shout out and a piece. Uh, and it was such a wonderful interview that actually lifted my spirits and gave me a lot of encouragement. And right now she has a book out. Uh, it's available on Amazon.com and Barnes and & Noble, and it is titled His Life or Mine. And then the next, she has two books, and the second book is The Best and the Worst. So that's what I just want to say that. And continuing on with the cuckoo-ness, I love this country. I love America, but we are the most stubborn people. Like, what is wrong with us? Like, why do we think that we don't have to wear a mask when we go into public places and they opened up in Kentucky? <laughs> Not one person had on a mask. They opened up somewhere in New Jersey, a restaurant. The employees had on a mask, but the people that was attending didn't have on any mask at all. Then I looked at the people at Walmart and Costco's and at department stores and jewelry stores around the country, and I'm looking at some of the videos, and I'm saying it in myself, like, why would people be so offended if they tell them to put on a mask before you enter into their establishment? They're doing it, they're, they're complying with government rules and regulations based on what is uh, mandated by their state. Like, why are people so defiant? Then I'm looking and I'm saying to myself, like, the senior citizens, the black folks, the white folks, the Spanish folks. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, like, okay. Come on, people. Good morning, Carnell. Like, can't we all just get along and be obedient and do the right thing? Buy 
putting on our mask, okay, you're not only protecting yourself, but you're also protecting other people. And when I sat down and I say, okay, what is my next teaching or the next thing that I'm going to uh, speak on? And understanding and overcoming depression is the title of this teaching, The Downers. I was going to call it Uppers and Downers, but then you would think it was like drugs and it's not drugs, Uppers and Downers. But despair, disappointment, discouragement, and destruction, debt, disease, distress, and division. And for those of you who don't know that they are loved, let me tell you, I love you. I love you, 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 and I, God loves you, okay? And I think that what's happening right now is that when I started with this uh with this series of managing your emotions, uh be overcoming depression is a part of it. And when there's a lot of uppers and downers in this life, and we've all experienced it during the pandemic. Oh my God, people are on a roller coaster of emotions. And I was going to call it uppers and downers. And in this life, besides those induced by drugs, in this chapter, uh, like, I sat down and I say to myself, this is a chapter of my life that I can sit down and I'm video documenting it. People are living out their lives on YouTube, on uh, Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook. But it's one thing that we're forgetting. We're forgetting to respect each other. We're forgetting to be kind one to another. And when it says in Psalms 40, chapter verse 1 and 2, it says, I waited patiently and expectantly for God, and he inclined to me and heard my voice. He drew me up out of a horrible pit, a pit of turmoil and of destruction, out of the miry clay and slime and froth, and set my foot, my feet, on solid rock, steadying my steps and establishing my goings. When the Bible speaks of the pit, as in the passage from the book of Psalms, I always think of the depths of depression. As we will see later in this chapter, David often spoke of feeling as though he was going down into a pit and calling out to God to rescue him and set his feet feet on solid level ground like david nobody wants to be in the pit of the nobody wants to be in the pit of depression okay when i say the pit of depression men suffer from depression women suffer from depression children suffer from depression young people the elderly and right now it is something the nation is depressed and people are lashing out at people and it is a terrible place and a space to be in emotionally, mentally, psychologically. And I can't think of like, I've been depressed and it is horrible. It is horrible. It is such a bad feeling. It is such it is like the worst feeling because you feels like you're in such a dark, empty, deep place and you can't you don't know how to fit you don't even know how to make yourself feel good or how to get out of the depression. And that is a trick from the enemy, from Satan. And when we are deeply depressed, we feel bad enough as it is, then the devil comes along. Not me, not me. You know, I'm here to give you joy, peace, happiness, and, you know, you know, and give you some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But we are fighting against an invisible enemy. And when... These 
misery are being reminded of the horrible things that we have ever thought of or said or done. I see people that is just doing random acts of kindness. I'm going to give Mr. Tyler Perry a big shout out like at the moment because like to keep the peace in his city and to keep the people happy <laughs> he's like giving people $50 gift cards and then I see in the state of New Jersey who was it I think Governor Phil's, Phil Murphy's wife was doing something with a food pantry where she's giving like food to like over 650 something people and then you have people in within the communities there are random acts of kindness that is taking place at the moment and we must learn to resist descending into the pit of depression where we are at the mercy of the tormentor of our souls who is out to totally destroy us and our witness as Christians and when I look at the 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 people that are just going out of their way to help people you understand I mean just to really go out of their way to help people then if you read Psalms 143 that can make you feel good doing random acts of kindness. My church, uh, the North Jersey, Jersey Vineyard, they've opened up their food pantry and they're giving out food to people within the community and within the congregation. And I think that is awesome. When do we can't just be for ourselves, and we have to think of... If I'm feeling depressed, what, how can I make myself feel better? And I think when it starts by serving other people, helping other people, doing kind for other people, respecting other people. And as you respect other people, you must also learn to respect yourself, okay? Now, Teach me to do your will, Father, for you are my God, and let your good spirit lead me into a level country and into the, the land of uprightness. As we saw, and we can look around us, we must learn to come into balance, okay? When we get too emotionally H-I-G-H, -H, or inevitably, inevitably, we must come down, you understand? And we, when we do, often we do not stop at the normal level of emotions, and this is what David called the level country, but we continue to plummet into the depths of depression. How? Why? I really believe that what David was talking about in Psalms 143 was not actual level ground, but level emotions. A lady who works, uh, one of my former co-workers, and she was actually a psychologist, you know, she works with manic depressives and once told me that in dealing with these types of mental health, uh, you know, when you're dealing with mental health officials, they come into contact with all type of people. And not only to keep these patients from sinking into deep depression, but they must also keep them from rising too high emotionally because you can be on an emotional roller coaster and that emotional roller coaster remember my mike tyson mike tyson was diagnosed as a manic depressive and now you know he's doing cannabis so he's always mellow and cool as we have seen as believers, believe it or not, this can lead others to learn to live a level and balanced life, okay, and not too high on ecstasy that is like on your emotional, like on your emotional high, and then you have your like emotional lows. God wants you to be balanced in an area of your emotions, and as believers, you and I are to keep as much 
possible in that level realm where the harmony flows. Now, we are to, to avoid getting addicted to emotionalism. Believe it or not, emotionalism is a thing, okay? And we that we have to stay constantly on an emotional high or else we risk falling into the depths of depression instead of riding on an emotional emotional roller coaster from one extreme to the other extreme we are to walk in the joy of the lord l o r d god has given us joy it's a fruit of the spirit which we we have defined as calm delight, okay? Downers, why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. According to the concordance, the word depression... It doesn't appear in the King James Version Bible, but the closest term to appear to that in the Bible is cast down. As we see in Psalms 43, chap, um, chapter 43, verse 5, in which David asks, Why are you cast down, O my soul? Okay, he's speaking to his inner self. Good morning, Thaddeus. Good morning, Pearl. He's speaking to his inner self. However, although depression itself is not mentioned by name in the Bible, there are other emotions that are related to these and let's discuss it, such as D-E-S-P-A-I-R, discouragement, uh, that's despair, discouragement, disappointment, destruction, debt, disease, division. These are just some of the things that Satan that the enemy uses to try to bring us down into depression, all the D words, okay? The D words, these are downers, okay? And what might be called, and I call them forerunners to depression, since we all have to be on our guard against them, okay? It I, I've studied each of these words and each of these terms, and, and I have lived it. <laughs> I have lived a life of destruction. I have lived in debt. I know what disease is. I know what distress is. And I know what, it, what it's like to be for someone trying to divide you. Okay? And when it comes to despair... Right, we are headed, we are hedged in, pressed on every side, troubled and oppressed in every way, but do but not cramped or crushed. We suffer embarrassment and we are perplexed and unable to find a way out, but not driven to despair. And that is in Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. What is despair? Despair, according to the dictionary, the verb is is a verb despair means to overcome to be overcome by a sense of futility or defeat okay and the noun means utter lack of hope something destroying all hope i define it as not knowing what to do or being utterly without a way Okay, we all know how frustrated we are when we know we ought to do something about a situation, but don't know what it is. No matter which direction we look, there seems to be no way out, but there is. But for the believer, there is always a way. There is always, always, always a way out of every situation. And why? Because Jesus came and says that I am the way, the truth, and the 
L-I-F-E. It gives me great comfort to remember that although there are times when <laughs> me, like the Apostle Paul and so many other saints and Christians and non-Christians and people in general get pressed on every side and are perplexed because there seems to be no way out of their circumstances. And God has promised never to leave us <clears throat> or forsake us. So when I come to a dead end, like I'm not driven to despair because I know that he, God, God will show me the way that I am to go and will lead me through to victory. You understand my prayer every day is father, guide my footsteps and guide me by the light show me my next right move disappointment discouragement and destruction without counsel purposes or disappointment but in the multitude of counselors they are established and in pro that's proverbs 15:22 and it it says in psalms 103 Chapter 1, verse 4, look, observe, and see that the Lord thy God has set the land before thee. Go up and possess it as the Lord thy God of thy fathers has said unto thee, fear not, neither be discouraged. Okay, that's Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 21. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who redeemeth my life from what? From destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. And all of us have become disappointed when we have a plan that fails. I hope that does not materialize, like, or a hope that doesn't materialize a goal that is unreached we are all disappointed when things don't work out our way when things don't go our way or things don't work the way that we want them to we're disappointed by everything from a picnic <laughs> that is that is rained out to sickness or or the death of a loved one we are disappointed when the new watch that was given to us as a present doesn't even work right and we are disappointed when the child that we are raising you know doesn't turn out the way that we expect he or she to be okay and there's, there are so many things in life that can disappoint us. When things that happen for a certain period of time, we experience a letdown, one that can lead to depression if it is not handled properly, then what then what we have to make the decision to adapt and adjust to take a new approach and when it comes to children suppose you know we get disappointed if our children one, you know, if your daughter gets pregnant at 15 and if your son comes to you and sit down to you and say, I'm, you know, that he's gay, what do you do? People get disappointed. We have people living vicariously through their own children. They're putting them in beauty pageants. Remember John Benet Ramsey? Okay. How much, you, you understand? And that little girl's life was taken away at the age of five. Then we have the young girl that Tyler Perry paid for her funeral. And we sit down and we look at that's a disappointment. You understand that little girl left the planet way too soon. She didn't even get a chance to at least experience preteens and she didn't even get a chance to live a life. You understand? So when, how do we handle disappointment? How do we handle the depression? How do we handle the sickness and the death of a loved one? How do we handle unexpected events? Good morning, Alina when we have to how do you handle getting divorced how do you how do you handle because we all have dreams for ourselves and i sit down and i say to myself when we make the decision to be 
to adapt and to adjust and to take a new approach to just keep on going despite our own feelings you understand to, to, to what can I say despite our own feelings and no matter what, don't give up in life. You have people that are suicidal. Do you know how many of my patients I had to deal with, with attempted suicides, successed, successful suicides, to the point where I'm, I'm crying and I'm saying to myself, my God, don't they know how much that you love them, Father? Don't they know how much that they are worth and that they are valuable? You have people going through stuff every single day in their life. And how do we handle it? How do we handle it? We have to speak life to each other. We have to lift each other up, build each other up, encourage each other. I saw a video that brought tears to my eyes. Why? A lady and her boyfriend walking down the street. I don't know what happened. And I felt so bad for that man. But she took a baseball bat, bust him upside his face, and then her boyfriend turns around and pump beats him to a pulp. And I'm saying to myself, I don't know the entire story, but what could he had possibly have done? Did he rob her? Like, he looked basically harmless. Like, I'm trying to say to myself, what could somebody have possibly done? Why are we so angry? at each other and at people. Why are we so violent? Why do we not have respect for each other and respect for people's life? Why? Why should other people respect us if we don't respect us? You understand? And this is something that needs to be addressed at another teaching and at another time, but when we make the decision, we must remember that we have the greater one. God lives with inside of each and every single one of us, residing with inside of each and every one of us. So as I respect you, Evelyn and Pearl and Thaddeus and Cornell, I'm respecting the God that lives with inside of each and every single one of you. You two, Arlene and um, Miriam and Thaddeus and David, Lee, Vanessa, you understand, we have to come to that place where life is going to frustrate us. That is life, life. You know, I call them challenges and <laughs> episodes and seasons of, you know, of one's life. But how long may it, it, it may take, no matter how long it takes, for our dreams and goals to become reality, we're not going to give up and to quit just because of our emotions, okay? Many of us have been living with unfulfilled dreams for many years, and I had to sit down and I looked, I, you know, and I sit back and I have never given birth physically because I had wanted to become a mom. But I have so many spiritual children, it's unreal. Like and nieces and nephews and children that I've spoken to, spoken and spoken into their life have been an example to. And I had to sit down and this is how God is. God thinks that, okay, Jennifer, you're wonderful with children. Children love you. Young people love you. You love them. And I never got a chance to be a mom because I wanted to have a child of my own. But I looked at how God has replaced all of those things in my life with wonderful people. Then we must remember what God once told me in a moment. I remember one time I was in such a stupid depression mode and I was so disappointed <laughs> and I think this was when I had made my decision to finally have the hysterectomy 
And God says to me, Jennifer, do you want, when you get disappointed, you can always make a decision to get reappointed. And it took me a while to understand that disappointment or reappointed. Disappointment often leads to discouragement, which is even more of a downer. We have all have experiences of depressing feelings that comes after we have tried our very best to do something and either nothing happens or it all falls totally apart, which is just one form of destruction. How disappointing and discouraging is it to see the things that we have loved and worked for and treasured like senselessly destroyed by others. That's why I don't like vandalism and destruction of other people's property or I'm, I'm really not uh, against hurting people or violence. You understand? And, but people are doing it every day, regardless of how it may happen or who may be responsible. You understand, we cannot, we see things even get worse by our own neglect. We neglect things. We neglect ourselves. We neglect other people. We neglect people that love and care for us. And regardless of how it may happen, we may be responsible or who may be responsible. It is hard to go on when everything we have counted on falls down around us. That's when the those of us who have the creative power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of them can get a new vision, a new direction, and a new goal, and a new P-U-R-P-O-S-E, and strength to overcome the downward pull of disappointment, discouragement, and destruction. And when it comes to debt, D-E-B-T. Hello, 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 hello. Nobody likes to talk about it. Everybody always talks about, oh, I want money, want money. But okay, the Bible tells us to pay your debt. Second Kings chapter four, verse seven. We have seen that the Bible teaches us that we are to owe no man anything except L-O-V-E, love him. That is it. Here in this verse, we see that we are to pay our D-E-B-T-S, okay? When we allow debt to overcome us, it can bring discouragement and even depression. Have you realized yet that it is usually emotions out of control that gets us into debt? Trying to live beyond our means because we want things, what? For our own purpose personal pleasures. It's good to have things for personal pleasures, but it's like keeping up with the Joneses, okay? You have to, good morning, uh, Sandra. You understand? I can't ball like some, like the ballers and stuff like that. I have to use wisdom and live within my budget, okay? And we want things for our own personal pleasure or sense of prestige or to impress other people leads to indebtedness. When I was married and I remember that we had got into debt, why? Because we did it by running up our credit cards to the maximum, buying things that we wanted for ourselves and for the kids, and we were making the minimum payment on the balance each month, but the interest was so H-I-G-H that we never seem to make any progress towards paying off the principal. What we initially owed on, and like what we initially owed, okay? In fact, we just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper into debt. And by the time I had gotten divorced, I had to learn to repair my credit. And I think I had shared this story when I started to repair my credit, they would only, they gave me, 
like a credit limit of like five hundred dollars, and I had to learn to be faithful with that. And I, in order to even get that, we what causes that emotions is a lack of wisdom. I wasn't responsible, and at that time I didn't you know, value what it, I, I just didn't use any wisdom. Can I say that? And if you and I are ever going to get anywhere in the kingdom of God, we must learn to live by wisdom and not by our carnal desires or just willy nilly on our emotions. We have to think, okay, we are human beings with emotions and we have to learn to understand our emotions the bible teaches that jesus has made us unto wisdom jesus has been made unto us wisdom and that the holy spirit is wisdom within us okay if we will listen to the prompting of the spirit we will not get into trouble why but if we live by the dictates of our flesh, we are headed for destruction. Wisdom makes the decision today. It will be comfortable with tomorrow. You understand? If we make wise choices today, it will be comfortable with tomorrow. So we have to think for today, but plan for tomorrow. Emotions does, does what feels good today and takes no thought of tomorrow. When tomorrow arrives, the wise enjoy it in peace and security, but the foolish end up in discouragement and depression. Why? Because the wise have prepared for tomorrow and are able to enjoy the fruits of their labor, while the foolish who have put pleasure first must now pay for tomorrow. Or you understand? Pay for tomorrow and pay for yesterday. Now, it is much better to work now, play later, and then play now than to play now and worry later learn to be in the present we can't change yesterday we can't worry about tomorrow but we have to use wisdom and do what we have to plan live for today plan for tomorrow it is so discouraging to go to the mailbox every day and find that there are bills, 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 bills. Do you know I get depressed when I go to the daggone mailbox and I open up the friggin' daggone mailbox and I see another dang... <laughs> I'm saying to myself, what the heck? But now we're in the middle of a pandemic, so I have to deal with it. Like the entire country... Many, many places have opened, but not many places have opened. Some people have been called back to work, and then some people have not been called back to work. People are receiving unemployment, and you have some people that's not receiving unemployment. How do we live and exist and stay out, get out of the depressive state that we're in during COVID-19? Here's the thing. Now, when we change things we cannot pay for, we are spending tomorrow's prosperity today. Then when tomorrow comes, all we have is debt. How many people are deep in depression right now at this very moment because of an overwhelming debt? To live a disciplined life, which is what it takes to produce good fruit in our lives, we have to be willing to invest today so that we can reap for tomorrow. We re relieve, to relieve the discouragement and depression, to, re to relieve discouragement and depression that comes from being in debt, we must get out of debt by becoming self-disciplined. Do you understand? By becoming self-disciplined to think not of today's sacrifices, 
but of tomorrow's R E W A R D S disease, distress, and division. By the great force of my disease, my garment is disguised and disfigured. It binds me about like the collar of my coat. In my distress, when seemingly closed in, I called upon God and cried to my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple, heavenly and his dwelling place, and my cry, C-R-Y, came before him, okay, into his very ears, and that is in Psalms 18.6, but I urge and entreat you, my brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus, that all of you be in perfect harmony and full agreement in what you say, and that there be no dissension of fractions or divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in your common understanding and in your opinions and judgments. The word dis-ease simply means, I'll spell it D-I-S hyphen E-A-S-E. It is a minute or a minute form of death, okay? If a person feels bad at that time, his dis-ease can easily draw him down into depression. From that reason, for or for that reason, we say that disease is a downer. Why? To be distressed is to feel hindered or to be full with anxiety and suffering. And that too is a downer. When, which can lead to a state of depression if not handled properly and promptly. Okay, as we see in 1 Corinthians 1.10, division refers to dissensions, fractions, disharmony, disagreement, and strife and when you look at racism racism is a form of division you understand and god does not like that when it comes to unity god wants unity within the family god wants unity within the body of C H R I S T. If a company or corporation is supposed to run smoothly, it would be nice if everybody was on the same page and in harmony and working together as a unit. Do you understand? It is like that within our homes, within our relationships, within our business, within the systems organizations, businesses, country, government, you name it, you cannot have division. You understand? Division is a form of depression. It is a form of disharmony. It is a disagreement. It is a strife. It is dis-ease, okay? Now, I hate disharmony. I hate dissension and I hate division and so does God. G-O-D, God does not like that. I despise arguments and disputes. I'm, I'm open to debate. <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> I'm open to a debate. Okay, we can debate. We can agree to disagree. But I used to be a fighter. What? No, not really. I used to fight in a form of rebellion. Okay, and I and like you know my mouth. It was this, and I remember one time my dad took my lip. Mm -hmm. If you're going to say anything, say something worth saying. <laughs> and if you're going to 
say something, say something nice and stirring up things. You ever see people that like just run to like gossip and backbite and criticize and they just say some of the most foolish and stupidest things and they in everybody business but ain't paying no damn attention to their own business. You ever know people like that? Yes, there's people like that. So we have to get to that point because I love, we don't have to get to that point. We have to get away from that. And we have to learn, if I bring it up, I bring it up. You understand? But we can't go around, I guess that's why they have TMZ and the tabloids and the National Enquirer and all this other kind of stuff. But that's their job. That's not your job as a child of God. That is not your job on on your workplace. Not to run gossip and spread division amongst the employees and bad seeds and all this other kind of stuff. We can't be doing that. Well, I don't do that anyway. I mind my business. They kind of call me kind of anti-social because... I ain't, don't ask me nothing, just let me do my daggone job so I can stay out of the office politics, okay? Now, I love peace, I love harmony, and I love tranquility, and nothing brings me down worse than division, either within myself, I don't like it when I feel like I'm fighting against myself, I don't like the fission between those that I love the most, such as my family and my family members, and I don't like, and I, and I know that God doesn't like division within his family and that is the body of C-H-R-I-S-T. Now, unity in the body and unity and harmony within oneself, that is God's desire and peace. You understand he wants P-E-A-C-E, D-E-S-I-R-E. -E. He wants you to have that inner peace within yourself. Okay, division, like all these other downers, comes from following feelings rather than the spirit. As we read in James 4.1, it says what leads to strife, discord, and feuds, and how do conflicts, quarrels, and fightings originate among you? Do they not arise from what? Our sensual, D-E-S-I-R-E-S, -E -E that are ever warring in our own bodily members, okay? This is a member, this is a member, this is a member, this is a member, my heart is a member, my foot is a member, my hands, my elbow, my personal, my boobs are members, you understand? My bodily parts are member, my bones, my nerves, my kidneys, my liver, my intestines, my veins, these are all members of my body. You understand? And when we fight against our self, the end results are downers, is the same unsettled emotions, which sooner or later lead to misery and destruction. And we cannot be like that. We have to have lifters. Lifters. God is the lifter of my head. Lord, how are they increased who trouble me? Many are they who rise up against me. Many are saying of me, there is no help for him or there is no help for her. But you, O oh Lord God, you are the my shield and my glory and the what? the lifter of my head, okay? So we have to say what God says about ourself. 
although there are downers in the in this life there are also lifters and the psalms that says that despite his distressing situation he is not despairing or becoming depressed because his confidence is in god okay his confidence is in G-O-D, and he is the lifter of my head. Therefore, lift up my hands when hanging down. Lift up my hands in form of surrender. <laughs> and in 2 Timothy, the Apostle Paul wrote, I desire, therefore that in every place men should pray without anger or quarreling or resentment or d-o-u-b-t in their minds lifting up holy hands okay so when we're depressed everything around us becomes to fall apart or lose its strength our heads and hands and hearts all begin to hang down even our eyes and our voice and you, you understand our tone our body language you ever see people like you don't even have to be an expert but you can read people's body languages and see that either it's either form of depression or a form of submission but downcast positions and stance can depress even more okay when we are in that downcast stance god tells us and he says to abraham lift up your eyes okay and look from the place where you are northward southward eastward and westward we can't see if we're always you understand okay we can submit one to another that's for like a time but when god is leading us look straight ahead okay hold your head up be proud of who you are love yourself you understand? Respect yourself. Respect you and the God that is within you. You understand? And yes, you are privileged. So, act like it. You're not a second class citizen. You're God's precious beloved creation. You understand? And we have to learn to start acknowledging the God within us and realize that God has crowned each and every single human, not some folk. You understand? Each and every person with glory and honor. Why? Because we're created in his image and he wants us to love ourselves, be good to ourselves, be kind to ourselves, be K I N D, kind to ourselves, okay? And our eyes and hearts are cast down because we're looking at the problem rather than G O D. So we have to make God bigger than the problem, okay? In Genesis, we read that the herdsmen of Abraham and his nephew Lot were arguing and fighting because there was not enough room for both the, their flocks and herds to graze together. So Abraham suggested that Lot go one way and that he go the other way and he gave lot the choice of which way to go and the nephew chose and the best lands he, the nephew chose the best lands to move into but abraham was left with the p o o r e s t lands for himself and his servants and livestock and that point god told him to lift up his Lift up your eyes and look around you in all the directions that you can see. For he was giving him all the land as far as he could see for his inheritance, 
his promises and he had promised to bless him and increase him abundantly okay and on that note i think hmm, i think that gotcha this is a good lesson for one of us to remember today that when people get disappointed you know, people disappoint us. Instead of becoming discouraged and depressed, God wants us to decide to lift up our head and our eyes and look around us, trusting him to lead us in to an even better situation because he has one for us, okay? It is so tempting to say, oh, What's the use and just give up rather than moving in a new direction as Abraham did. And God is constantly exhorting us to lift up our eyes and our heads and our hearts and to take inventory in our blessings and not our problems and to look to him instead of the evil enemy satan he wants to bring us to do what he wants to bring us down and to feel depressed and to feel unloved and to feel not useful and you know i love my neck i love my brother's neck i love my sister's neck i love his neck you understand so learn to value yourself because you are precious to God and you're precious to somebody, okay? And no matter how your life has turned out at this point, you have only two options. One is to give up and quit and the other is to keep going. So if you decide to keep on going, gain again, you only have two choices. One is to live in constant depression and misery, and the other is to live in hope and joy. And on that note, we have to choose to live in hope and joy does not mean that we will never have more disappointments or discouraging situations to face. It just means that we have decided not to let them get, get me down. And instead, you are going to lift up your eyes and your hands and your heart and your heads heart and heads and look not at your problems but at God look at God who has promised to see you through to the abundance and to victory okay and on that note that would be it for today so we're gonna do getting into the zone okay and we're gonna do getting into the Z O N E Mm -hmm. getting into the zone and we're going to be talking well before we get into the zone we're just going to do money and energy source why is it that some people can earn millions end up in bankruptcy and then start all over again gaining back their millions again while others struggle just to keep the status quo it is at some is it that some are more lucky than others is it that some are better educated what is it that makes some of us rich and some of us paupers <laughs> a pauper like the prince and the pauper or okay if we have to it is at is it that some of us are better educated? What is it that makes some of us rich and some of us P-O-O-R? And is it that we all have like a financial blueprint at some point 
and some have a blueprint to be rich and some have a blueprint to be poor and if so we can change that blueprint i really 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 think so money is a is a subject that stirs great feelings in all of us and its uses can give us great happiness it can give us great joy and yet the lack of it can create feelings of fear depression and worthlessness so money itself has its own energy and it is a piece of paper or a piece of metal but it is still an energy source and there is still energy around money and that creates so much happiness and so much sorrow so why is it that some people are blessed to receive all that we need and want and others are not and some have much more than they need and that we are still not happy have you ever seen people good morning peggy how you doing hun Money alone cannot buy true happiness. It really can't. We've seen it. We see it every day. Okay, but in this, we see it every day. You have, have you ever seen some people that have all the money in the world and are miserable? And then you have people that don't have much and they're very, very happy. And then you have people that have been so blessed by God that they're connected to receive the abundance and the happiness, okay? It can give us security. It can give us tranquility of mind. It can provide us with experiences that we may not otherwise be able to have. Money is one of the energies through which we experience life with ease and with strife. Okay, so the feeling of guilt and greed that comes into the picture as well and competition that often comes with the striving for money are simply an attachment in the physical in the physical money itself and the misplaced interpretation and the use of those finances is a misuse of that energy, a desire for money. And for money's sake, rather than for the good that it can bring forth, it is an unhealthy attachment that can bring you L-A-C-K and unhappiness. And were we all born to be rich? I think when God created Adam and Eve, yeah, we were all born to live comfortably because there's enough land on this planet for each and every single person. But you have people living in cages. You have people living in shacks. You have people just clustered together in some of the most worst conditions. And I say to myself now, why are there the haves and the have-nots? And... Why do some people have more than others? And I'm not against the rich and I'm not against the poor, but I like having money and <laughs> keeps the lights on, keeps the roof over my head, it keeps the car payment, it puts food in my fridge and I'm okay with it. So we need to stop attaching ourselves to the physical and our physical sources of income and start relying on our inner selves and our subconscious, which is the real source of all the abundance and that we will ever need and D-E-S-I-R-E -E, because God is the divine source and when we are aligned correctly, our subconscious is working for us and we need only to think of what it is that we need, want, or D-E-S-I-R-E, -E, and the money or the means that is needed to accomplish those D-E-S-I-R-E-S -E 
will flow to us, okay? Our subconscious works automatically all the time and in the same way that our heart pumps blood, our lungs breathe for us, our subconscious brings to us what we D-E-S-I-R-E. So the issue here is learning to program our subconscious to bring us the things that we D-E-S-I-R-E and to stop those things that we don't want from appearing in our life, that we are not to desire. Do you understand what I'm saying? And in particular, how can we program our subconscious to deliver us the means of the financial resources for all that we need. Money is made up of two energies, okay? How can we use money physically and rationally, such as how we budget and save, invest and spend, and how we maintain our awareness of money on a conscious level? And we really have to think in these terms. And I think it's really important because the second is the subconscious energy of money, which is driven by our thoughts and emotions. Currently, we are in an economic slump with the stock market failing, with COVID-19, with businesses closing, and the general loss of the economy. But is there really less money now than there was like, say, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago? Are there really less resources? Have we used up more of the resources than are available to the people on the planet? That is a good question. The answer is absolutely not. You understand? So where has all this money, G-O-N-E, why is everyone... P O O R E R. <laughs> Why am I spelling? Why is everyone poorer now than they were a few years ago? The answer is that money is not just a physical ent entity or a physical piece of paper. Money is also an energy that ebbs and flows and ebbs and flows and in abundance that attracts more abundance, okay? Many of us are caught up in the fear cycle, watching the stock market drop and listening to the doom and gloom of the news. And this is the only, this is like perpetuating more of the same because our thoughts and emotions impress on our subconscious to focus focus on more of the same. Our world economy is in a spiraling state of panic and fear and fear and loss of money and lifestyle, which brings more loss of money and more loss of lifestyle, okay? So in any economy, even during the Great Depression, while the masses sunk lower and lower into financial fear, a select few were able to create great wealth and some were able to rise above this collective consciousness slump and use the energy of money and abundance to not only provide for themselves, but to pro provide in such a great way that they're not only helping themselves, but helping many other people. And it is this energy that we need to learn to tap into it, okay? Now, the origin of our being, of our subconscious, the human conception of this and God is a subjective matter, okay? Some of us have traditional religious beliefs and some of us have metaphysical beliefs. If you have definite concepts based on your religion or upbringing that didn't fit into what appears to be a metaphysical or an alternative viewpoint that I will be describing, please have an open mind and be considerate, okay? And just consider it, regardless of what we may think or feel, whether our mindset or, or belief, it will not affect what? It will not affect the prosperity 
prosperity programming. And I really think that prosperity programming or programming yourself for success is a process. Okay, it is a process. It's like anything else in life, I think. I I remember I had a wonderful, uh, spoke to a really nice lady. She was going through a grieving period and uh, she had an, an I called it an episode, an episode of uh, where in her grief she had started drinking heavily and she just wasn't focusing on her children or on life in general. And I called it an episode and she goes, well, Jennifer, you know, I couldn't go to the rooms or do the AA or um, Narcotics Anonymous or Alcoholic Anonymous because she didn't feel within herself that she was an alcoholic. She was just going through something and she didn't know how to process what it was that she was feeling. And as a life coach, I, I say it all the time that we have to learn to process our feelings and just like pot, like like people in addictions, it is a programming and reprogramming and deprogramming the way that we think. It is a mindfulness. It is a shift. In our thought process on how we view ourselves, how we view our finances, how we view money, how we see things, you understand we have to start thinking differently and believing differently and use the other 90% of our brain to be creative. And our subconscious is represented and through God, God is the divine source, okay, and we are his image, and he is part of us, with, is within us, and God is that universal source energy, and God is the white light source, okay, one whole being, God is a ball of energy, Okay, he is nothing but pure spirit, pure energy, pure source. You understand? Look at the sun, the moon, look at the things that were created, that wasn't created. Look at the universe, the planet, the stars, the the, the table, the chairs, the, the lamp, the light. You understand? He is the source energy. He is the source of wisdom, knowledge, and everything that is wonderful and good. And he is omnipotent and can create all things and all experiences. And all things that was ever made was made by him and for him. And in order to really appreciate this love, joy, and happiness, God needs or that this love, joy, and happiness that you need and I need, God, we need to look back at God himself in different ways. We need to see God in many different ways through different experiences and being on, like, being one, okay? He could not do that. He then split himself almighty wonderful creator that he is into little parts of himself and he created people <laughs> p-e-o-p-l-e -E. you understand so we're like little mini gods with the big god dwelling with inside of each and every one of us and these images enable him to look back at himself and each one can experience joy and love in many different ways that could be experienced as one collective. Okay, so each of us is one of these little images of God in... Oh, oh okay. Uh, for real... I keep forgetting that. Mm. Okay. 
So, we have to really, 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 really think of that in such a wonderful way that I think this won't be able to stay put. So, on this note, I guess this is the end of this episode. <laughs> because now I have to recharge my phone. Good morning, Jerry. Thanks for joining. Uh, you can just do, like, the replay, okay? And I guess I'll pick it up tomorrow. Oh. Science and technology, for real. I guess it's all a part of life. So let me just do this. So on this note, I'll just hold the phone and I'll end the session for today because I need to charge my telly. And I hope that everyone has a wonderful day. It was pretty cool last night, a little chilly. And uh, I did make an appointment for my COVID-19 testing. So please get tested, everybody. My, my hairdresser won't let me into her salon unless I get tested. Why? Well, I can't share her story, but one of her clients that was coming to see her went literally tested positive for COVID-19 and I guess now she's making it mandatory that we not only wear masks but that we all of the clients get tested before we enter her establishment so I think that's a good idea safety first okay and so on this note everyone have a wonderful day uh Take care of yourself, love yourself, love your family, uh, love my community, love my friends, love my mastermind team, love my business, love my coaching clients, love my community, and I'm looking for guest speakers uh, that would like to appear on Jennifer's Perspective, so you can DM me or uh, send me an email to... You know, uh, Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer Gray, JG, at jennifergraycoach.com. You can also pick up, uh, down, you can download the Amazon Kindle app and you can pick up a copy of any one of my three books. Uh, you, it's available on Amazon Kindle. You can read it on your phone, tablet, or computer. My Journey to Healing, uh, Business Success for Coaches and Counselors, and Marketing Basics Led by the Spirit, okay? So, when we look at life, you know, God gives us wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Live in the now, but plan for tomorrow, okay? And then when, uh, download the app. Or you can also get it on my website, www.jennifergraycoach forward slash resources. Okay, jennifergraycoach.com forward slash resources. Okay, I would like to speak to some of, some of the men that are listening. I have a lot of women guest speakers, but I would like to speak to some of these men and find out what they're doing within their community or within their businesses. And I'm looking for a PR person. Okay, a PR person that huh, is skilled in that area. <laughs> so have a wonderful day, everybody. Love my family, love my friends, love each and every one of my listeners and subscribers. And oh, yes, thank you all for subscribing as well. And uh, take care of the elderly. Lead the young people, respect each other, love each other, be nice one to another, 
and appreciate each other, okay? Put on your PPE, wear your mask, wash your hands, and be kind to yourself, to your planet, and each other, okay? Have a blessed day. Love each and every one of you, and peace. Ha, ha, ha.